today, we're going to take these Target Bullseye Playground dollar mini potion bottles and reimagine them into something that looks a little bit more authentic. We're also going to add a few extras just for fun. The things we'll need to reimagine our mini potion bottles from Target is a lot of stuff. So as you guys can see, I have a whole bunch of different things here. I have other bottles. So I picked up some from the Dollar Tree. If you don't want to use the bottles they gave you, or if you want to make your own from scratch, or you want to add on, you could use some of the bottles they have in the craft section at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree also came out with these fantastic glass laboratory flasks. There's two different sizes. There's the bigger one and the smaller one. I featured them on an Instagram reel, told you guys to run, not walk there, because I feel like they are fantastic little bottles. They're glass, super cute, really different. So I definitely picked up quite a few of those. I have some brown bottles back here from Hobby Lobby. I have one here that I picked up while I was antiquing, you name it. But like I said, if you just want to use the potion bottles from Target, great. They're a dollar a piece. They are filled with items. They're really nice little bottles. But if you want to mix it up so that they're not all the same bottle, and if you want to add some other items, or like I said, if you want to make them from scratch, you definitely can. Now, other things I'm going to use to spruce mine up are different colors of cording. I have some mosses. I have some black spider webs. We're going to use creepy cloth. I have some different bones. I've, I've got some of the little dried things that look like little baby pumpkins. I've got some fake eyelashes that we're going to make into spider legs. I've got silica beads, more eyeballs to add to the misfortune. I've got sequins you name it. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. But now I'm going to show you how to take all of this stuff and reimagine these Target mini potion bottles and make them that much better. And to help us do that, I have my labels printed on sticker paper and the link for those is in the description down below. Let's get started. Would you like a chance to win a monthly potion bottle from me? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Patreon not your thing? Consider becoming a member here on YouTube. You get exclusive emojis and icons to use in the comment section. Link is in the description down below. The first bottle we're going to reimagine is Bottle of Bones. Now, these aren't bad little bones. They You get, I think, 15 in here, I think is what its little label said. And they are nice little plastic bones, but they're just so white and crisp and kind of basic. I feel like if you were going to use these, I would probably put them in a container with some, say, like brown food coloring or brown alcohol ink and just kind of roll them around, even paint, just to kind of get them a little bit dirty, dingy, and looking more like bones. Then um, these almost just look like dog bones or something to me. So I'm not going to be using these particular bones. I picked these up from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to dismember them, and that's what's going to go inside here. And I did change mine from just bottle of bones to fairy bones. Um, I thought it was a little more interesting and, uh, you know, seemed more appropriate for the size of the bones as well. So all I'm going to do is take one of these off. And this is like a garland of bones, so I'm just going to cut this cording off. And you could definitely save this cording to wrap around some next year bottles too. So I like to reuse as much as humanly possible when making projects like this. A little piece of moss. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is dump this out. But I'm definitely going to save them because I may use them for something else. You never know. All right, and obviously we're going to get rid of this label, which if you guys remember from my Christmas video, getting the label off of these is somewhat problematic. I pulled one off of one of these already, and it didn't seem quite as bad as the Christmas ones, but the Christmas ones, man, they were like on there. So I am going to take a heat gun to this and see if warming up the adhesive at all will help these come off. Sometimes that does, sometimes it doesn't. And if you do use a heat gun to try to warm these up a little bit, just be careful. It does make your bottle very hot and it can burn you. So, okay, that did peel it off, but it leaves a ton of residue, which if you have Gooby Gone, you could use that, but then it makes it really oily. So I actually just like to use rubbing alcohol. And the rubbing alcohol just kind of beads it all up and takes it off. Some hot soapy dish water would also take this off after you've gotten the initial label off, um, but 
I'm not by a sink at the moment. I'm in my work studio. So alcohol it is. And there you go. It is all off the bottle. And we're ready to reimagine this one. So like I said, because we're making this one fairy bones, I do want to include, I feel like, as much of the little skeleton as I can, just so it actually feels like a skeleton. So unfortunately, sorry, Mr. Skeleton, we're ripping you apart. And then we may use our pliers or scissors, any of that, to just kind of trim some of these pieces down and help us get them out. All right, so... I've snapped the little leg off here. I'm gonna get rid of, well, it's kind of like part of the patella. And I think, I don't want like just a full leg in there, so I think I'm gonna cut this off around the kneecap. And I basically just made a little like crimp with my pliers because I don't want it to look like an unnatural cut. And then I'm just gonna wiggle it back and forth to get this sucker to break. I might have to do a little bit more. And then I'm gonna use my brown marker to re-age any of those little newly freshly cut sections up. Um, let's get my scissors out here. Okay. All right, so I'm just using a marker here to re- age it up. And we're going to use these markers again for snake skin. All right, and then I'm just going to slip them in there. And this is soft plastic. I feel like I'm going to be able to dent the back of the skull. I purposely positioned the little skull on the bottom so we don't see the little hole I made larger on the bottom. Now, I don't think I'm going to get a lot of his ribcage in there, but I might cut part of it off. So, I think I'll detach the spine. So I will do one of the little rib cages in here. Let me get some of this cleaned up. All right, so we are going to cork him up. And I'm going to put the label on. And I'm debating about whether I want to put the label on back here to cover up part of the rib cage so that when you spin it, you see the bones. And I, I think that's what I'm going to do. So we'll take the backing paper off of our label. That way, when we flip this around, you can see all the fairy bones in there. All right, let's, I wanna add a little bit of cording, I think, to the top, and I think I'm gonna add a little bit of gray because the labels kinda got a little bit of a grayish tint to it. So just to tie that in. All right, we're going to wrap this like I have hundreds of other bottles before. And if you guys are unsure of how to wrap your bottles, I will put a link up above to my tips and tricks video, and it will show you the best way to wrap your bottles, what to fill them with, best way to store them, why I do what I do on some of these, all those things. Bottles are so little and light. They like to fling around. And I could add some drips to the top or something like that, but I actually think on this one, I like how simple it is only because there's a lot going on inside this bottle 
that I like leaving this one a little more simple. So I think that's going to do it for our reimagined bottle of bones that we turned into fairy bones. For the next one, we are going to do Enchanted Pumpkins, which is my version of their jack-o'-lanterns. Now, their jack-o'-lanterns was just filled with orange jack-o'-lantern confetti. And I, you know, I just wasn't a huge fan. So I'm using a diff different bottle altogether. This one's just a tiny bit shorter. So to give you an idea, here's theirs. So this one's just a tiny bit shorter and a hair fatter, and I just thought it was a good mix of sizes to add a little bit more dimension to. So we're gonna make this enchanted pumpkins, and I'm gonna use these dried pumpkins. I've had these for years, but I'll put a link to some down below. You can get them at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, all kinds of different places, but I just love how cute they are. They look like perfect little pumpkins. Now it's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna have to make sure that I get ones that will actually fit in here. Um, because they do vary in sizes. So we'll just have to make sure that we fill this up with ones that'll actually fit into the neck of the bottle. And then I think I'm gonna add at least one to the top. It may be a little cluster, we'll, we'll see. But we'll get this filled all up. And I have a hot glue gun warming up on low heat and I'm using a champagne colored metallic wax hot glue stick and I talk about all that in the tips and tricks videos too about you know what's better hot glue or wax and um, you know they're both good in different capacities it just depends on what you're using it for okay so we've got our little pumpkins in there and I think that looks super cute we're gonna cork that up and then I want to figure out if for the top I want to just do one on here or if I want to do a small cluster. And if I just do one, I kind of want a perfect one. It looks like a great little pumpkin. And I think I kind of like this one. Let's see, how's that? Hmm. Okay, I think that one's perfect. It's even got a tiny little stem looking thing on the top, which I think will be great. Let's see if my hot glue gun is ready. Now the difference between the sealing wax and the hot glue is that it is much more drippy. So that's why we always do it on a low temperature. And you wanna be careful not to make it too drippy for whatever you're doing. All right, so we're going to add our little pumpkin up here and press him into the wax. Okay, I think that looks good. We're going to add our label I'm going to go around the outside edge of this with a matching marker, which in this case I feel like is black. And again, this just helps give it a more finished look and you don't see that white cut edge. All right, so I have peeled my backing paper off and we're just going to apply our label. Let me see if I think that's straight. And it's not. All right, then we have our little enchanted pumpkins, which is our reimagined jack-o'-lanterns. The next bottle we're gonna do is raven wings, which I kind of thought it was weird that they were raven wings, so I made it raven feathers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the label off of here. It's already got the black feathers in there, so I'm not going to mess with that. I, I like the black feathers, but I did grab a new feather. This one is kind of this iridescent black, which I think is really pretty, and we're going to add it into our wrapping on this one. So I'm going to recork this up, and... We're gonna use this lighter color cording. 
Okay, so I started this just like I would any of the other ones. And now I'm going to add in my little feather. So I'm just going to kind of loop it in. So I'm going to hold it with this hand. So I've got my little feather in here. And we're going to add our label. And there you have it. Our raven wings turned into raven feathers. Okay, so I am now going to do Eyes of Misfortune. Now, I actually bought two of these because I felt like for a dollar, the extra eyeballs were still a pretty good deal. All of the eyeballs in here are this like mauvey pink color. If you want to change that, you can actually use a permanent marker. And you can go over the iris and you can make it whatever color you want. Just And then if you get any on the white, you can actually use a Q-tip with some alcohol on it and you can rub it right off. But that is a way to change the eyeball color. Now, I did also pick up from Michael's this little container of some glass cabochon eyeballs. And I thought some of these were super fun and different. So I think we're gonna do a mix of recoloring a few of these. We'll leave quite a few of them that mauvey pink color because I do think I'm gonna use this purpley pinky moss, um, which does coordinate nicely with the eyeballs if you decide to wanna go that route, just because again, I hate the white paper that they put in here. But that way it kind of coordinates with some of these pink eyes. But we are gonna add, I think, a few of these other eyeballs as well. Maybe not all of them, but we're gonna use a few. So we'll open this one up and on the other ones I had already pre-done this but there's a plastic seal on here so you just want to peel that off so that you can actually uncork it. And we're going to pull all the squigglies out. And we'll take our label off. All right, now that our bottle is cleaned, we're gonna prep some of these eyeballs. So like I said, I'm gonna leave some of these, the pink for sure. And I am gonna add some of the new ones. But I do think we're gonna color some of the other ones as well. Okay, so I colored in a few here. So I feel like between that and the ones in here, we should be good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some of my purple moss, and I actually got this at Michael's in the clearance section. It was part of the summer collection. And I think I got it for like a dollar or so. So definitely check out the clearance supplies. You never know what you're gonna find in there. And especially when it's things like moss and stuff like that, they make really great potion ingredient fillers. And reindeer moss is by far my favorite. That's the kind this is. It's so spongy and just has these cool looking little tendrils that come off of it. And it just looks like some kind of species or something. Okay, so I just put a little bit in there and it's gonna be enough for us to wedge our eyeballs. Because if you look at the back of these, the reason they put that crappy paper in there is because the back is just like this hollowed out half circle. So we're going to stick our eyeballs in and I'm gonna use my little stick here. You could use a cooking skewer to help position these, anything like that. And I'm going to slide my eyeballs into place and then I can re-fluff out my moss. I actually think I really like how that turned out. A little mix of the cabochons and the eyeballs that came in the pack. 
And I think it just adds this like creepy eyeball vibe. Now I do think I want to put one of these cabochons on the top, but I don't know whether I want to do one of the glass ones or maybe just stick one of the ones that was actually in there on the top. And I, I may do one of the ones that was in there on the top. So I think we will do that. I am going to do some drips then to stick the eyeball into. Let me get our black gun hot here. While we're waiting for our hot glue gun to heat up, we're going to go ahead and put our label on. So I feel like this is the most boring section right here. Make sure that looks straight. We've got our little eyeballs peeking out on the sides and up above, which I think is super cute. I'm gonna save all these other eyeballs for a future project. All right, I think I'm gonna add my little eyeball up here. And I think that gives us our eyes of misfortune. The next one we're gonna do blood of a bat. So like I said, this one's gonna replace wool of a bat just because what they had in there was just black confetti, which really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And like I said, when you actually look up what wool of bat is, it's holly leaves. So I didn't feel like that felt very Halloween-y. It feels more Christmassy. So I decided to change it to blood of a bat. So we are going to use some glycerin. And I have no idea if this is gonna work, so we'll find out. And I'm gonna use some red food coloring. And we're going to mix it up. Okay, so I actually think that worked out pretty well. In the past, I've used several different things to make blood. I've used corn syrup, I've used hair gel, I've used all that stuff, but I thought, you know what? Let's give glycerin a shot. It's gonna get movement, just like some of the other ones will. And, you know, it should continue to just resettle back on the bottom so we don't have any up on the sides. But yeah. We're gonna go ahead and use that for our blood of a bat. And I actually don't mind even if it does stay up on the sides, it doesn't really bother me. It looks like you just went and found a humanely dead bat and um, acquired its blood. <laughs> and again, this is one of those really great bottles from Dollar Tree that come in a set of two. I just think these are a fantastic little bottle. So if you're able to find them, I would definitely go out there and get some. I think that looks straight enough. Let me rub this all down. And I do think I want to wrap the neck of this. And I think we're just going to use a standard jute twine here. And I know sometimes I burn those little wispies off, but I think on this one I actually like it. So I think we're just going to make that simple. And done. So we took our wool of bats and made it blood of a bat. All right, this next one is Witch's Brooms. And I decided to make it more of a like Weasley Wizard Wheezes type product. So I decided to make it emergency brooms. And it says, simply use the Ingrosio charm and fly away. So I thought this was super cute. And we're going to do some of the same color purple drips on the top. Wanted to give it just a little bit of a fun vibe, like you'd make these grow so that you could get away. So I'm going to get this label off. All right, we've got our label off. And it looks like my hot glue is wanting to pour out of here. So let me make sure that's corked good. 
We're going to go ahead and do our drips first. Okay, now that all of our drips are drippy, we're going to put our label on. And there we have our witch's broom to emergency broom. So for this one, we're going to do Eye of Newt, and this is one that I added on. And we're going to use silica beads. If you've ever got one of these silica packets in a box of shoes or you name it, um, they're really useful. So I like to save them, and they look like little eyeballs. So they're just these clear silica beads, and silica is made to absorb moisture so that it'll keep your items dry, which is why they put them in your shoes, to keep your shoes from getting all moist and moldy or mildewy. So all I'm going to do is pour some of these silica beads in here. Now, silica beads, you do not want to eat them. So if you have small children or pets, anything like that, try to do this in a safe area or put the whole thing in a bowl to catch anything that might fall, um, and then seal the top if you need to to make sure that no one tries to eat these. Okay, now I don't want this to be completely full because I want them to be able to move in there, but I wanted you to be able to see that they are in fact round little circles that look like eyeballs. So we're gonna cork this up. And I'm going to put my label on here. All right, and we're going to put our label on here. And I think that looks pretty straight. I'm going to rub that down. And I think I'm going to leave this one without cording. I don't want all of them to have cording and drips and things like that. I want them to be different. And I love that this one can just shake around. Again, um, put a little bit of super glue around the edge of that. We'll actually do that right now. Okay, let me uncork this. I did cork this one really well. But let's put a little bit of super glue. I'm just using some Gorilla Clear glue on this. But you could use whatever glue you want. Um, the E6000 is great, you name it. But I'm just putting a little bit on there, and then we're going to, and I like to put it towards the bottom, so as you push your cork in, it kind of coats all the way up, and you don't get as much seepage out the top, just so that way no one can eat those Eye of Newt accidentally. And there we have it. Okay, so for the next one, we're going to make snake skin, which is replacing scale of a serpent. So to do that, we're gonna do the same technique we used for basilisk skin, which is taking bubble wrap and manipulating it. So basically, I like the smaller bubbles better. So if you have the smaller bubble style bubble wrap, that works the best. So Next time you get an Amazon package or whatever, save your bubble wrap. And you're going to pop all the bubbles. I know. Oh, darn. And once you get all of your bubbles popped, you're then going to stretch and pull your bubble wrap till it gets a very, like, twisty, snake skinny look. And um, I think it's just a really great way to give that snakeskin look without actually having snakeskin. Now, if you have a snake or if you are, are by woods or something and you have access to some snakeskins, by all means, use some real snakeskin. But if you're like me and you don't have access to that, you don't really want access to that, um, bubble wrap works great and gives you a very similar quality to actual snakeskin. Now, obviously, snakeskin's not usually clear, clear. It, it is translucent, but um, we're gonna take some of our markers here 
And we're gonna add a little bit of color to this. So I'm just kind of rubbing it on so that it picks up some of the texture. Again, just kind of adds to the scaliness of it. And if you feel like it's too thick or anything like that, you can take a paper towel and kind of rub it right after you put it on and it'll help to smear some of that and make it more cohesive. I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of green. I know we're putting this in a brown bottle, but you're still gonna be able to see that there is color to it. All right, and I think that looks good. So we've got our snake skin with just a little bit of the color, and we're gonna go ahead and put it into our brown glass bottle here. And I picked this up in a pack from Hobby Lobby. But even though it's brown, see how we can see the variations? I don't know if you guys are able to see. You can see the variations in the color and that it's not just clear. All right, so we've got our little snake skin in here and I actually think I might pull one out because I want you to still be able to see see some of the shape of it in there. Okay, that's better. A little bit of negative space. And we're gonna cap that up. And let me move this so you guys can. Mm. So I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see, but you can actually see the snake skin in there. So we're gonna add our label. There we have our snake skin instead of scale of serpent. Okay, so for the next one, we are going to do black cat hisses instead of scaredy cat. And I decided I was going to make the black cat hisses some black spider web. So I felt like I would just kind of make it feel like smoky or breathy, which I feel like would work for black cat hisses. So basically I'm just going to take some of this black spider web and cut a little bit and I'm just going to start pulling it to get it to feel more airy and wispy. And I picked the black spider webs up at the Dollar Tree and I'll be able to use them for other things too. So I just wanted a little bit of something airy in there. So we've got the black spider webs. We're gonna add our label. I decided to give this one a little bit of a vintage vibe. I feel like it's got like a 1950s or 60s look to it and I think that's pretty straight and for this one I think I want to add a little bit of black cording at the top here if I would have had some orange cording I would have done that but uh, Shockingly, I don't have any orange, which is somewhat surprising because I feel like I have pretty much every color under the sun except for orange. So there we go. We have our black cat hisses instead of scaredy cat.
The next one we're going to do is spider legs. And again, this is one that I added on. And I thought that using eyelashes would actually be somewhat brilliant, um, especially when we cut them off of the back so that it's just the little lash part. I felt like it would look very much like spider legs. So I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. I didn't want to spend too much on these, obviously. And I went for the longest lashes I could find. So we would have more of a leggy look. All right, so we've got our eyelashes here. And basically all I'm gonna do is cut them off of the back here and try to catch them in the, you know what, I'm gonna use the uh, dish here because I'm pretty sure I'm going to miss the bottle when I try to catch these because they're so tiny. And what we are left with are all the little hairs, or in this case, spider legs. So I'm gonna cut the rest of these and then we're basically just going to, I might use tweezers and put them in the bottle. And even with the tray, I ended up missing it. There we go. Okay, I've got all of my little spider legs cut off of the lashes here. So I'm going to use some tweezers ugh, to carefully put these in here. Another thing you could do is if you didn't want it to look like little tiny spider legs, I feel like you could um, take some of the plastic spiders and cut the legs off of that and stick it in there. But I just kind of wanted it to look like tiny little daddy long legs, spider legs, or something like that. And it may end up looking like hair of a werewolf. We'll find out, but... All right, well... Yeah, we're going to go with it. I may cover part of the outside of the bottle with uh, some spider webs anyway, so it'll kind of cover that up. But I think it's an interesting take on spider legs. So I'm going to cap this up. And we'll put our label on here. Okay, so we've got our little spider legs in there. And I'm going to use a lint roller quick to roll up some of these extra eyelashes that are hanging out. All right, so I'm going to use some of this, it's like a whitish gray spider web. Just want a little tiny bit. Okay. There we go. And that should be more than enough. Fake spider webs and I have a love hate relationship. I love them when they're done, but they are a hassle in the middle. Okay, so I think I'm going to put a tiny bit of this webbing underneath the cork so that the cork can help hold it. And then we'll put some on top of it as well. But this will at least give us a starting point to pull our little webs here. All right, so I think I'm going to have some of this end on the bottom. So I'm gonna get my hot glue gun out. All 
All right, so I feel like I can cut the rest of that off. And that way you'll be able to see that there's still legs in there, but it'll kind of hide the fact that they look a little hairy. And I really just want a very tiny Okay, so just have a little thin layer on the bottom there because I don't want it to affect how it stands up. But I want to be able to take my spider webs through it and stick it down. All right. And there we have our spider legs. All right, the next one is gonna be dragon scales. Again, this is a one that I just added and I actually made the label so that it matches dragon's blood and dragon heartstrings. So if you've already made those two, this one actually matches the aesthetic of those two. So we're going to add some of these sequins that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and these will end up being our dragon's scales. So I'm not going to do all of these, like I'm not going to do this orange one, but I am going to do like some of these tan and champagne colored ones. And again, if it doesn't fill up the entire thing, I'm okay with that. And since these are three different colors, I'm just going to mix them up and I think that is good enough and again they're still able to be shaken up which I like as well so we've got our little dragon scales here and because my other dragon potions have a chain on them I felt like this one Whoop, if I can get the last dragon scale here. I felt like this one should too. So I've got this chain and we're going to attempt to break it apart here so that I can attach it around the neck of my bottle. Okay, I just put the chain on off camera. Not gonna lie, that sucked on this tiny of a bottle. But I got it. In retrospect, I probably could have used the hot glue gun and just put a dot for it to glue the whole thing on. But the chain is on there nonetheless. So we're going to add our potion label. Right, so this one, again, is pretty simple. But it has the little shaky dragon scales in there and we have our dragon scale bottle all right and lastly we are doing swamp scum so this is the taller of the two little beaker bottles from dollar tree and we are going to fill this bottle with some moss and again this is a green reindeer moss it's i just love the way it looks and this is just a regular green moss. And you're definitely going to want a stick or something to help you push your moss into your bottle. So now that I've got my moss in there, I'm going to add some green dish soap. And this is the same green dish soap I have used for the past six years on several different potions. So I've talked about this before, but with moss, it's almost like it absorbs the liquid. So don't be surprised if it looks like 
a day or two later, it's a lot more empty than it was. It's like the moss like sucks it all in and makes it go away. So I'm using the dish soap just because it's green. You can use whatever you want. You could use glycerin, rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer, styling gel, anything you want. But because this is already green, I didn't have to color it. And it's a good consistency. It's not too thin, but it's not too thick. And it mixes nicely with our moss. So again, you just kind of want to work this in. And you're going to get some of those bubbles. Those will go away. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this up. The bubbles will go away as it sits. But it's going to give us our swampy look we're going for. With this. But I'm also going to put just a tiny bit of moss... on the top and I'm going to capture it with our wrapping. Okay, now that I have more of a sheety piece, I should be able to tie this on. Okay, I'm gonna use this piece and I'm going to attempt to somewhat tie it on Kind of like I did for my toad warts potion years ago. We put some moss across the top and I love the way that one looked. So we're going to go for a similar vibe here. Okay, so now that I have that started, I'm going to take my cording and I'm going to just wrap it like I normally do. And even if some of the moss is coming out underneath, I actually think that'll just kind of add to the look. We have our swamp scum and there you have it our reimagined target mini potion bottles and a few extras just for fun these will be a great addition to our potion and prop collection we've been making along the way or something fun to have for halloween decorations so if you guys like this video give me the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do so and we will catch you guys later thanks so much